Um, I want to ask the Minister if he will fund a physical survey of the estate of the Besborough Mother and Baby Home in Cork City to locate um, the possible burial place of more than 800 unaccounted for children who died in Besborough or in hospital after being transferred from Besborough to outline any plans that the government has for this site and to make a statement on the matter. Thank you, um, thank you, thank you Deputy. And I'm very conscious of, of the hurt felt by particularly the survivors uh, and family members of people who died in Bespera. Um, one of the most tragic aspects of what happened in that particular um, mother and baby institution is the uncertainty regarding the burial places of the many children who were resident there and the many children that we know died there and in some linked institutions as well. The investigation of burial arrangements uh, in mother and baby institutions, including Bespera, that was an important part of the Commission of Investigation work. Uh, in, on Bespera itself, the Commission carried out cartographic and landscape assessments of possible unrecorded burial arrangements. It also carried out a site survey and followed up with arrange, uh, with. Uh, with responses on, on, on this. The Commission concluded that it is likely that some of the children who died in Bresbra are buried on the grounds, but they weren't able to find either the physical or the documentary evidence of this. And as no evidence of locations was found, the Commission didn't consider it feasible to excavate, excavate the full available site, which now amounts to 60 acres or indeed the full original site that would have been over 200 uh, acres. Right now I'm not aware of any detailed proposal for government funding to undertake a further survey of the Bespur grounds. Um, I think given the site, the scale of the, of the estate both now and, and the wider state, that would be a very significant, uh, that would have a very significant cost and just it, we have to recognise that. Uh, my department did provide support to um, uh, survivors and relatives of, of former residents of Shan Ross in terms of a site examination there after they came to us with a specific, uh, with a specific uh, proposal. Um, I know there have been planning applications on the land in, in, in Bespera, both the land including what is seen as the potential burial site and in other lands as well. And I know recently, I think in September, uh, on board Planola rejected a planning application and one of the reasons for this rejection was the potential uh, location of a burial site on the lands. Um, Minister, we don't know the full extent of the infant deaths in Besbra. The order's records are unreliable and their statements to the Commission were no nothing short of abject lies in an attempt to squirm away from justice. At least 928 babies died there. Only 64 graves have been identified. So the Department of Local Government at the time chalked the scale of infant deaths down to, and it's a quote, conditions associated with the unfortunate lot of the unmarried mother. Survivors of Besbra have never received justice, not from religious orders who abused them and not from the state who facilitated it and turned a blind eye. The very least the state owes survivors minister is to find the bodies of their children. We need an investigation into the grounds to establish the location of the remains of the babies and to conduct a sensitive excavation um, and a dignified exhumation of any of the remains. The entire site at Besborough should be CPO'd and established as a memorial site. So I'm going to ask you again because your reply sounds like kind of given the scale of the site we won't bother or there's no kind of plan to. I'm going to ask you again will you ensure this occurs. Thanks, uh, thanks, Deputy. Um, I've had the opportunity to visit the uh, the site at Vesper with with a number of, of survivors and former residents. Um, I know there are differing views in terms of the issue of um, uh, the um, invest, excavation and reburial of um, human remains at that site. Uh, I know when we discussed Tume, there was, a, uh, I think, a, an absolute agreement about what the treatment of the remains there and what the state's response should be. I don't think there's that una unanimity in response of, of BESPRA. That's not to say the state shouldn't do anything, but I just think it is important that, you know, when we speak of engaging with survivors, we have to recognise sometimes different survivors have different views in terms of how the state should respond on a particular site. I would point to the fact that in Shan Ross, the state did support survivor groups in terms of undertaking further investigations. So this has happened before. Um, but I think it's, it's important that we try and seek some degree of consensus among survivors in terms of our approach uh, on, on these sites. 
Minister, sometimes I think it feels like there's a bit of a disconnect in terms of how you speak about this issue and the lived experience of people. I'm just going to give one example. In 1960, 18-year-old um, Madeleine Walsh was sent to Besbra. Her baby son, William, fell ill at three days old and was taken from her. And he died there just aged six weeks old. After years of requests for information, she was informed by nuns that he lay in an unmarked grave at Besbra Folly. She visited that spot for years to be near her son and to speak to him. Until 2019, when the fifth interim report revealed that the nuns had lied, William had actually been buried in an overgrown famine graveyard on Cars Hill. There seems to be no end to the cruelty that is heaped upon these women from religious orders and from the state. At every step, the department has failed them. So many women and children who are in Besborough have been excluded from your discriminatory redress scheme. And every woman in Besborough who's been forced to scrub floors, laundry and nappies day in, day out until their hands were raw are completely excluded from the work-related payment. So, Minister, like you said, planning was recently rejected there because of the known unmarked mass grave of children. There is no reason why the state should provide a survey for the exhumation of two and not for the other sites. I know that survivors are not a homogenous group, but how do you say one group deserves answers and justice and another one doesn't? And, it, and that's a really difficult question to answer. How do you um, seek some degree of, of, of agreement, of alignment among survivors on a site when there are clear differences in terms of, of how to proceed. I won't lie to you, Deputy, I, I don't have the full answer for you today. Um, we know and from my engagement when I travelled to Tume, when I met with survivors there, all groups, and, and there are different groups of survivors represented in Tume as well, but everyone was unanimous in terms of the need to intervene because of the treatment of the remains of children at that site. Um, that same degree of unanimity doesn't exist in, 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 in relation to, the, to BESPRA. And I think before, particularly before you undertook the scale of intervention that will be undertaken in Tume, I think there would have to be some effort to bring together some degree of maybe not even consensus, but at least an understanding among everybody in terms of the way. As you say, there is a site that some relatives see as a burial ground that they recognise as the graves of their children. And there, for, for others, as you so correctly identified, there are other family members who have no idea where their loved ones are buried after they, they, they die due to the treatment in, in, in Vespera. And trying to bring that degree of consensus is difficult. I don't have all the answers today, but look, I, I think on the Vespera site in particular, because the grave site is unknown, I absolutely recognise there is further work to be done to try and uh, bring about that Very degree much. of consensus. And just if I could, um, with your indulgence, we do now have the special advocate for survivors, Patricia Carey, she's in place. Um, and perhaps what I could, I might perhaps talk to her in terms of looking to see uh, is there any way we can advance that? Um.